In this video, I want to provide a derivation of the posterior predictive distribution for the circumstance of when we're dealing with a Poisson likelihood and a gamma prior. And the way in which we're going to actually derive the posterior predictive distribution is via use of basis rule. So what we're actually looking to find in this example is the probability of a certain sort of new data point x primed given that we've observed a vector of data x. So this is the thing we'd like to obtain, but what do we actually have? Well, what we could do is we could write down using Bayes' rule the probability of lambda given that we've observed x primed and given that we've observed this vector of data x. We know via Bayes' rule that this is just equivalent to the probability of x primed given that we have lambda and also given that we have x, a sort of vector of observations, times the probability of lambda given x, which in this case is sort of a kind of prior, although in this example it's actually a posterior density, and then we're dividing that through by the probability of x primed, this new data point, given that we have observed x. And notice that this is exactly the same as Bayes' rule that we sort of normally use, except that now what we're doing is we're conditioning everywhere on this vector x. So if you were to remove this sort of vector x, then it would be exactly the same sort of basis rule that we always use. So all we've done is we've just conditioned on this extra variable here. Okay, so what does this expression on the right hand side actually mean in this particular case? Well, this first part of the numerator, this sort of to the left here, is our likelihood. And what we assume is that if we know lambda, then in that case x primed and this vector of observations x are conditionally independent. So we can actually remove any conditioning on this vector of observations because the only thing that connects x primed with the vector of observations x is actually the parameter lambda. So this is just a simple likelihood in this particular example. Okay, so that's the first part. What about the second part? Here, this is normally the prior of Bayes' rule, but here what we've got is we've got the probability of lambda given that we've observed x. So this is just our normal sort of posterior, our sort of standard posterior that we obtained in a sort of few videos ago. Okay, so then what we can do is, I, I'm actually going to rearrange this before I sort of explain what everything else is. So then what we can get is that the probability of x primed given that we've observed x, which is the thing we're trying to get hold of, is actually equal to the probability of x primed given lambda, just the likelihood, times the probability of lambda given this vector of observations x, all divided through simply by the probability of lambda given that we've observed x primed and this vector of observations x. And so we know everything on the sort of numerator here, but what about the denominator? Well, this denominator here is actually a, another sort of posterior density. Although it's the posterior density given that we've observed x prime and given that we've observed this vector of observations x. And because of that, this is itself, because we're assuming a gamma prior, this is itself a gamma distributed variable which has got a sort of first parameter in this example in the sort of alpha prime, if you like, which is equal to n x bar plus x primed plus alpha. And for the sort of second input, it's simply n plus 1 plus beta. So if you compare this with the numerator, which is just our original gamma sort of posterior, the numerator is just a gamma distributed random variable which has got a first input n x bar plus alpha, and its second input here is just n plus beta. So when you write these two sort of side by side, or above one another, you can see that the only difference between these two expressions is the fact that I've got an x prime here, and I've got a 1 here. And that makes sense, because essentially all we've done here is we've added an extra observation, so we're, that's equivalent to actually shifting sort of the whole thing from n x bar to n x bar, plus x primed. And I should stress here that x bar here is the mean of the sort of vector observations x. It's not the mean including x primed. And the reason we've got a 1 here is because previously we just had an n and now we're moving to n plus 1 observations. So now we've got an n plus 1 plus beta. 
Okay, so now what we can actually do is we can write out each of these things in full form and then hopefully we can simplify the whole thing to get something which is manageable. So if we do that, we first of all write out the Poisson likelihood, which is just simply lambda to the power x primed, all times e to the power minus lambda, all divided through by x primed factorial. Then if we write in the sort of first posterior, which is this part of the numerator, this is just equivalent to n plus beta to the power, in this case, of n x bar plus alpha, divided through by the gamma function of n x bar plus alpha, and it's this times lambda to the power n x bar plus alpha minus 1 times e to the power minus n plus beta times lambda. And what we're doing is we're dividing this whole expression through by this posterior density, which is this sort of second gamma distribution, which I defined here. So if we do that, this is just equivalent to n plus 1 plus beta, all to the power of n x bar plus x primed plus alpha, all divided through by gamma of n x bar plus x primed plus alpha, and it's this whole expression times lambda, in this case, to the power n x bar plus x primed plus alpha minus 1 times e to the power minus n plus 1 plus beta or times lambda. And then what we can do is we can start to cancel the top and bottom because we should expect that this sort of marginal density, the probability of x prime given the vector of observations x, should not contain lambda because another way we could have actually got this marginal density was by integrating out over all ranges of lambda. So we should hope that the top and bottom sort of expressions that involve lambda should cancel. So let's just check that that's the case here. Starting off with lambda to the sort of power things, we've got lambda to the power x primed times lambda to the power of n x bar plus alpha minus 1. And similarly, we've also got then e to the power minus lambda times e to the power minus m plus beta times lambda. And if we were to sort of add the exponents on both the lambda and e to the power sort of whatever, we would see that both of these sort of numerator expressions would cancel with the denominator. On the denominator, we've just got lambda to the power nx bar plus x prime plus, um, in this case, alpha minus 1. And that's exactly what we've got on the sort of numerator. So we can cancel that. And we can also cancel all the expressions with e in them because they're actually going to be exactly the same as well. So that at least looks like we've sort of started out on the correct course because any sort of lambda terms have cancelled here. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to move to a new screen here just so I can finish off this derivation. Okay, so just rewriting our expression, we have that the probability of x primed given our vector of observations x is equal to n plus beta all to the power, in this case, n x bar plus alpha divided through by x primed factorial times gamma of n x bar plus alpha. And then it's this times gamma of n x bar plus x primed plus alpha divided through by n plus 1 plus beta to the power of n x bar plus x primed plus alpha. So all I've done there is I've just sort of flipped the denominator here. Instead of dividing through by the denominator we had on our sort of previous page, we've multiplied through by 1 over the denominator, which of course is exactly equivalent. So then what we can do is we can simplify this somewhat by writing the first part as n plus beta divided through by n plus beta plus 1 all to the power, well, if you notice this sort of first expression, our first sort of numerator and the denominator here, the thing which they have in common in terms of powers is n x bar plus alpha. So this whole first expression is just the power of n x bar plus alpha. And then it's this times, well, the thing that we've got left over is, of course, the denominator's also got this x primed here. So we've got to multiply it through by 1 over n plus 1 plus beta to the power x primed. Then finally, we sort of write our second part in terms of the gammas as gamma of n x bar plus x primed plus
plus alpha divided through by x primed factorial times gamma of n x bar plus alpha. And this expression here is exactly the same as a sort of NCR expression which we get from a binomial expansion. And the way to see that is just by recognizing the fact that the gamma function is itself the continuous analog of the factorial function, which is exactly that which we would get in a sort of NCR expansion. So what we can actually do is we can simplify this second part here and we can write this as, in this case, sort of components of an NCR expansion here as n x bar plus x primed plus alpha minus 1. And on the denominator, we've just got x primed here, or not really the denominator, the second part of our NCR expansion here. And the reason we've got a minus 1 here is because, remember, that gamma of a number n is defined as n minus 1 factorial for the case of when we're dealing with n being an integer. So just quickly rewriting the sort of top here, n plus beta divided through by n plus beta plus 1 to the power of n x bar plus alpha times 1 over n plus 1 plus beta all to the power x primed. And when we look at this, we see that this is itself a negative binomial distribution, but its sort of first input, its first sort of new alpha, if you like, call it alpha primed, is equivalent to here n x bar plus alpha and the second input here is just in this case beta plus n. So we've proved that the posterior predictive distribution like the prior predictive distribution is a negative binomial distribution.